dearly beloved of God, we praise him each moment and we thank God for his time that he gives us to live here on earth. We appreciate your God that you give us opportunity every moment, every day, every minute, every second that we think about your goodness in this land of the living. Bless us with your word in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God for this time again. We thank him. I sincerely thank him for what he does and for what he is. He remains faithful even when many times we go astray, but he searches for us and he brings us back. He desires not the death of a sinner, but he desires that a sinner repents and lives. And so we dive into this word again. And his written word, be it written or spoken, has power. And we talk about biblical personalities. For me, they have done greatly for me. Every time I read about the examples that I find in scripture, be it a negative example, you learn something. Be it a positive example, you learn something. And we have done, we have discussed done a lot of them. We have talked about a lot of them and we shall continue living, talking about them because actually this Bible is about God's acts and acts of people. The reason why in one of the books in the Bible is called Acts of the Apostles, but some other people call it and evidently it's called Acts of the Holy Spirit. So we talk about acts here. We talk about God's acts in this written word, but also acts of men and women. And from these acts, we learn something. So the person here that we talk about is the man called Herman. Herman in the book of Esther still. Because Esther is one of the books that we find lots of treasures well, like other books in the Bible, of course. And we look at the characters that made the book. And so we find Esther, the chief character. We find Herman another character, but also we have the king, Ahasuerus, and some other versions called Zaxaxes, and all those are characters, and even Haman's wife. We shall talk about her. She's called Zeresh, and other companions here. Now, Haman was one of the people, one of the characters in the book of Esther. And he stands out not because of the good that he did, but because of the evil that he planned to do. And so in his life, in Haman's life, we find some flaws and some mistakes that he committed. We see what hatred can he do. We find out, we discover what hatred can do. In Haman's life, we see what envy can he do. And so we talk about this man. And he is introduced in the book of Esther, chapter 3, verse 1. Now here it says that after these things, King Ahasuerus, promoted Haman, the Agagite, the son of Hamedata, and advanced him and set his throne above all the officials who were with him and all the king's servants in verse 2 of chapter 3, who were at the king's gate, bowed down and paid homage to Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But... Mordecai did not bow down or pay homage. Now, here is a summary verse of everything that was. Haman is introduced, a very honorable man, a noble in the king's palace, elevated to the highest office there, and everybody must pay homage, must bow down to him. Now, here comes this Jew, whom we have already talked about anyway. You heard about, um, about Mordecai. Here, he comes again in the life of Haman and is the one that actually Haman bases on and wants to annihilate to cause genocide among the Jews. But of course two people stood out for the Jewish salvation. That one is a known fact. Esther who was Hadassah and Mordecai, the man that we have already talked about as one of the personalities. Now because Haman did not do this, and because he stood for the values of his nation, the beliefs that we talked about, Haman became furious. And the reason why we're talking about hatred, 
The reason why we're talking about envy and what envy can do, what hatred can do. And so Haman stands out for the evil that he did. Now, before we do anything, remember that actually he belonged to the Amalekite people. And from time immemorial, Amalekites were enemies, were arch enemies to the Israelites. And long time enemies, like I've already said, of the Jewish people. Now, he bred hostility. And you know, someone who harbors hostility in his heart, someone who harbors hostility in her heart against another person, there are repercussions. When you are hostile, be it for the good reason or for the bad reason. Now here, Haman bred hostility for the Jewish people. And the Jewish people spearheaded now by Mordecai and Esther, the young lady, who was being prepared. But fortunately, Haman, I mean, uh, Mordecai had asked Esther to keep silent about his identity and until an appropriate time. Now here, the breeding of hostility in Haman's life caused trouble. So he was shaped by hostility. Have you ever seen someone who is shaped by hostility? Someone who, by mere looks on his face or on her face, is a hostile person. The acts that they do, hostility to other people. Now, Haman was that kind of person. He showed these characteristics. So he used his position badly. He was in a high office. We have seen that in this chapter 3, that the king had elevated him. But his position, coupled with hostility, coupled with hatred, coupled with envy, things did not go down well with Haman. And so the reason why I'm talking about him is actually we can pick a lesson that actually if there's someone who wants to go that way can turn, turn around and become the character like Mordecai, useful people in the Bible that are talked about and that we shall continue talking about them. Now, what do we see in evidence here that Haman, the man, desired so much honor and because he desired it so much, he caused other people trouble. Now, listen to me that when Mordecai did not bow down before him, the Bible says that he burned with fury. He burned with anger. Have you ever seen people that want respect all the time, everywhere they go, to be greeted everywhere, to be saluted everywhere, to be bowed down before everywhere? Now, if someone is obsessed with this kind of thing, something breeds in their heart. Haman was that he was poisoned with the negativity in his life. Feelings that are killing, feelings that are destructive, how many represents that category of people. Now, in chapter 3, verse 5, of course, actually, I've already talked about it, that whenever he saw Mordecai, Verse 5, and when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow down or pay homage to him, Haman was filled with fury. And you can imagine the fury. Of course, actually, these things are arranged that is being, you know, there's being angry, there's being, you know, and then you go to fury it's at a certain degree of anger, gnashing the teeth, wanting to bite someone. Now, Haman was that kind of person. But we learn a lesson here. If someone learns, wants, you want to grab this, you want to get this, you want to get this, you want to get this, and that everyone must be under you, under you, under you, there is always a temptation to be furious. There's always a temptation to be angry at the highest, you know, level. And so Haman leaves us a lesson here. I have read it, I have thought about it, and I pray to God my Father that I will not harbor you know, this kind of fury, not harboring the anger that leads me to sin. The anger that led Haman to sin, to cause a genocide of God's people, planning to kill them, all of them. This was deadly. And so, 
as he was planning this, you know, God works behind scenes. God works in mysterious ways. Someone can plan evil. Someone can plan anything. But for you, you are there, you don't know what God is doing, but God is working. Did I mention at one moment that in the book of Esther, and many, many commentators have talked about it, that the name of God does not surface anywhere, but his works stand out. Pray the Lord. And even in our times, as we walk out of our house, as we walk out of our gate, as we walk out into town, into the village, wherever we go, we trust that God is working behind the curtains to safeguard us. And so I pray that actually we learn something from this man. And remember what Paul tells in the New Testament, tells his readers in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17 and verse 23, that everything that you do, do it for the glory of God. And so this is something that was far-fetched from Haman. And he did whatever he did. But for him, he was after his own honor. And when you are obsessed with honor, when you are obsessed with respect, when you are obsessed with high things, the temptation is there. It's not bad to be respected. It's not bad to be honored. I also desire, when I'm coming to class, I'm a teacher. It's a sign of honor. Children stand up. When you're coming to church, when a priest is entering, it's an honor, really. That actually people stand up and honor. And not honor to you, but honoring God. And so this honor is good. Respect is good. But when you get obsessed for your own sake, it can cause you trouble. Haman, it happened the wrong way. And so friends, we learn something here. That we learn not to do certain things the wrong way. And remember, the Bible mentions very, very clearly in Proverbs 16, 18. What does it say? That pride goes before a fall. And so here, we, as we address someone loving honor so much, as we address this man, Haman, we find actually pride is good, possibly in some cases, be proud, but the Bible warns us against being proud. You know? This is what happens. Pride goes before our fall. And so may God remind us in Proverbs 16, 18, that we do go humble, you know, go slow on certain things. Another thing that you learn from Haman is that in the psychology there are what we call moods. And there is what we call mood swings, you know, oscillating. They go up and down, go up and down. And it's okay, we are human beings. At one moment, you are happy. At one moment, you are. But if they, they swing so much, like a pendulum, you know, this time they are here, this time. All of us get angry. All of us are happy. All, all that, it happens. But too much of anything is dangerous. This is what I learned from here. Now, Haman, at one moment, the Bible says that he was happy, he was joyful. At another moment... All of a sudden, he has changed the moods. And by the way, when your people that you live with don't understand you, because of your mood swings, you know that actually you have a problem. And you need, to need, you need to find a counselor, a psychologist to deal with you. Happy at one moment, angry at another moment. Now, those mood swings, whether you're a parent, or you're a mother, a father, or a leader, a boss, or somewhere, and people don't understand, a pastor of sorts, and people don't understand you, because of your mood swings, Haman leaves us a lesson here. And in chapter 5, verse 9, the Bible talks about Haman uh, whenever he would just look at one man. Chapter 5, verse 9. And the Bible says that, And Haman went out that day. You know, he had eaten, Esther had given a banquet, and they were all happy and joyful, full of energy. But when he went out that day, joyful and glad of heart, but when he saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he neither rose nor trembled before him, he was filled with the wrath against Mordecai. Now, someone that has left the party very happy, elated, high, and feeling good, 
But because of looking at some other person, you know that people who feel so bad when they see another person whom they hate, whom they don't like. Now, Haman did like Mordecai. But listen, this is a lesson to us. Why must you, why must some other person, some other person's presence, just merely being there, rob your joy, rob your happiness, rob away your peace? Haman spirit is a dangerous spirit. Actually, in our society, we have people who are this kind of thing. And I said earlier that actually if someone is this side, this message is for change, turn, round. Are you blessed in some way? Haman was blessed. But he felt bad for another person. He was a high-ranking person. Now, highly positioned, but he felt bad for someone who, is, who sits at the gate. A low person. Can you imagine? There are some people who feel bad about, you know, someone just being there and you feel so bad. I know there are certain bad things that those people also do, but we pray that actually God enables us to, to sort out things, sort them out well, and so that they cannot lead to death. They cannot lead to something that is beyond, uh, uh, which, is, which is much more dangerous like that. So don't be wrecked by evil feelings. Treasure what God has given you. What is your position at your workplace? What's your position in a family? What's your position? And so that actually you don't rip from the bad feelings, you don't rip from the evil feelings that you have against another person. Now, let's not be deceived. Haman, from those evil feelings, he ripped what he sowed. Friends, Haman with the moody swings wanting to annihilate, wanting to destroy, to kill Mordecai and other people. Because of this, the Bible said actually he set up, he was advised by his people, he set up a, a tree, they called the gallows, where he said they were going to hang Mordecai. Now listen to me. In chapter 7, and this is what happened, that in chapter 7, verse 9, this is it. Then Haribon, one of the eunuchs in attendance on the king, said, Moreover, the gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, is standing at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. He had already put that tree, that pole, a cross of sorts called gallows here. And in verse 10, the Bible says, And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hung the Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the wrath of the king was abated. Pray the Lord. Now there are certain things that I learned from here that as you sit, what plans do you have are they plans of destruction or are they plans of peace, of love, of fruitfulness? Which kind of fruit is it anyway? Bitter or sweet? And so this man suffered the consequences of his um, kind of life. And these mood swings led him to fury, led him to anger, led him to hate, led him to dislike, and indeed it ended up boiling down on his head and remember what the bible says that you dig a hole for another person and you end up there yourself and so this man Haman suffered the consequences suffered the consequences now take care that you don't suffer the consequences take care in the plans that you make take care that you are not overridden by bad motives, evil intentions, they can boil back, they can get back to you, which is actually a lesson for us 
from Haman that he was hanging on the very gallows that had set up for another person. In our society, these, these things are so common. They are all over the place. But I pray, I pray from God the Father that he will change us, that this kind of attitude is removed from me. This kind of attitude is removed from anyone, anyone else who is around us. One other important thing that I want to learn from Haman is the kind of people that he was surrounded with. Friends, his friends, the company. Listen to me. That you see, they're the ones who advised him that now you hate this man very much. Put up gallows so that he will be hanged on them. Now he took the advice, the wrong advice, the evil advice of his friends. And chapter 5, verse 10, this is um, what happened. Um, Chapter 5, verse 10 to 14. I just want to read it very quickly because time is running very fast. Now, chapter 10, chapter 5, verse 10. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. When he saw that actually uh, Mordecai was not, he restrained himself and went back home. And he sent and brought his friends and his wife, Deresh. Sent for his friends. Come. Now, verse 11. And Haman recounted to them, the splendor of his riches, the number of his sons, all the promotions with which the king had honored him, and how he had advanced him above all the officials and the king and the servants of the king. Then Haman said, verse 12, Even Queen Esther, let not no one but me come with the king to the feast she prepared, and tomorrow. I'm also invited by her together with the king. Very, very, very proud here, recounting to his, to his friends. Now, yet all this is worth nothing to me so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. One person was eating, up, was eating him up. Now, listen to me. Then his wife, Zeresh, in the vernacular, we call her zealousy. And his, all his friends said to him, Let a gallows 50 cubits high be made, and in the morning tell the king to have Mordecai hanged upon the cross, uh, hanged upon it. Then go joyfully with the king to the feast. This idea pleased the Haman, and he had the gallows made. Listen to me, friends. I'm turning towards the finish of this engagement with you. But which kind of friends do you hang up out with? Which kind of people give you advice? Haman, maybe his pride would not have taken him this far. But listen to what happened that his people, these people, guided him, encouraged him to do the worst. Friends, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, the Bible says, Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good character. So, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good character. So, I appeal to the young people. I appeal to the men. I appeal to the women. I appeal to everyone. This caused Haman trouble the kind of people that he associated with, the kind of people that he was in the company of, led him this way, that the gallows that he set up ended up being the ones on which he himself was hanged. And Mordecai was elevated like we saw. And so, finally, I bring you this. As you think about the friends that you hang out with, whether they are valuable friends or evil friends, be happy. Focus on what you have to be happy. Focus on what you have to be happy. Haman did not focus on what he had to be happy. He had all the positions. He, had, was, he was high ranking in the government of King Ahasuerus. But he was not happy with what he had. So I have told myself to be happy with what I have. The position that I have, I need to be happy with it. The little wealth that I have, I need to be happy with that I have. Amen. And so be happy with what you have. Is it a car? Is it a piece of land? Is it a house? Is it 
a cow is it a rabbit is it now whatever little that you have be happy with what you have now what caused Haman trouble was was not content with what he had and so Haman was unhappy for Mordecai so don't allow another person to make you unhappy Esther 5:13 that as long as i see this man now let not another person rob away your peace and i'm learning as someone who is a supervisor as well who supervises others and as someone who is also being supervised may god help me that i may not be robbed of my joy because of what another person has i need to be happy with what i if i am a sweeper i need to be happy with what i am if i am a cleaner i need to be happy with what i am if i am a manager i need to be happy with what i am if i am supervised i need to be happy with what i am if i am a supervisor i need to be happy with what i am and so don't get caught up in the traps you set you know you set the traps they catch you proverbs 26 27 is what i have just been talking about don't set traps for others because it might end up catching you be blessed and take lessons from Haman in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit so that you live an impactful life for the good in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen